Today, I'm going to talk to you about the nine mind games the narcissist plays with you. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So, the name of these games, the, the overall header, if you will, is that these games help the narcissist to do two things, manipulate and control you. So we know that already and I list these nine and I'm sure most of you are going to be familiar with these but there are others too. I like to say these are the narcissist's favorites. And the first game is the portray themselves as a victim game. So let's say you're meeting someone for the first time maybe from a dating site um, or it's a friend of a friend and uh, you're getting to know that person or it could be a new co-worker it could even be a family member it could even be your partner or your spouse so it's just going to vary the types of victim game that they'll play so let's just pick one of those for now and so let's say you found somebody on a dating site they sound like they're compatible with you you go and you meet them and you know you're having a nice conversation keeping it light keeping it chill right and then all of a sudden <clears throat> the narcissist starts talking about his ex relationship and you know how how his ex was so mean to him or her and it was horrible they took advantage of them and they were innocent they were blindsided and then all of a sudden you see a little trickle of a tear the eyes well up and you're looking at this person like wow did you really bring that to our first time meetup and i'm kind of speaking from my own personal experience of having gone through, through this a few times where you know the meetup's supposed to be fun light chill you know get to know each other kind of thing and that is such a red flag because you have to understand with the narcissist the hook comes very quickly they don't wait the appropriate amount of time to get to know each other you know initially on the surface no they dig right in with that victim hook to pull at your heartstrings and another example would be let's say let's say you've been married for a number of years right you I'm sure you have experienced the victim mentality from the narcissist but what you may not have known with your time with the narcissist is they're talking to neighbors they're talking to your mutual friends they may even be talking to family members and saying things behind your back making things up and talking about how you know they're the victim and you know you're so mean and you do this and this and this but don't tell them that I said anything I just had to vent to someone and and so basically they want to portray themselves as a victim so why do they do this well they want to appear innocent they want to be able to blame shift if if in case something happens where they're exposed they can say well he or she made me do it and let's face it it's an easy and convenient way to gain favor from people and I don't know if you've met some narcissist but they can cry at the drop of a, a dime and it's ridiculous I want to say you know get go into acting or something because they can cry like like nobody's business and because they've been doing it for so long the second mind game is the trust me game that's right so they'll act he or she will act very supportive towards you and very understanding they'll get you to talk and you know share about yourself and you'll get a lot of this I call it the bobblehead mm, wow mm -hmm. like they're coming across like they have a lot of empathy for what you're saying a lot of compassion and we know those are two things the narcissist absolutely has none of so again it's it's an acting performance it's it's a performance and so they want you to feel like wow i feel comfortable with this person uh, they really understand me I can share a little bit more about myself maybe some secrets from my past or you know things that 
that are very pertinent to you and to your life and now you're sharing it with the narcissist thinking that you can really trust him or her. And the third mind game that the narcissist loves to play is the find out everything about you game without divulging anything or very little about him or herself. And why is that? It's an important game for the narcissist because that way they get you to spill the beans, right? To share about yourself. And uh, we already talked about get, gaining your trust, but now they want you to divulge everything because they're such good listeners, right? And so you're sharing things, you're sharing your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities, maybe some very hurtful past situations that you're still wounded from. Oh, they love that one. Your past traumas because, you know, they're going to use those on you later down the road. And so they want you to divulge all the deep things, all the secret things of your heart while they share very little. And even if you are to ask them, well, what about you? Can you share some things too? They'll, they'll mirror you. They'll, oh, well, I went through that too, you know, and I had a similar situation happen. And, and so that really ties you together in your mind. You're going, wow, we have so much that is alike. And he, he hears me. He understands me. He already knows me. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is, is that the narcissist is taking mental notes and will use that information down the road either as a threat or an attack or punishment. The fourth mind game that the narcissist plays is that they've established themselves in a power stance. That's right. They have given that, that position to themselves instead of equality for both of you? No, they're already positioning themselves as the superior one. So basically they've promoted themselves and they've demoted you. And they start by making you doubt in your competency. They'll even say they doubt your competency. And they'll brag about their ability while belittling your non-ability, according to them, right? And they'll continually say, look, you know what? I can do this so much better. You just sit back and relax. I'll take care of everything. They'll start to take charge and that will put them in the higher, in their heads, higher position. And the higher position represents superiority and control in their twisted mind. The fifth mind game, now I just want to stop here. We're starting to get more intense. I just want you to know that these games are going to get uglier, more intense, and more devilish. So the fifth game that the narcissist loves to play, fifth mind game, is the instill fear in you game. That's right. And how do they do that? Well, it's in, in the beginning, it's in subtle ways where uh, if you don't do something the way they think it should be done, they'll have a sharp tongue with you or a sharp word with you, and you'll be taken aback like, wow, well, I guess he or she must be having a bad day. And then something else happens, and there'll be a little bit of that belittling. Another time, they'll have some criticizing on you, and you find yourself starting to walk on eggshells like you know maybe i just shouldn't interrupt him or her when they're doing this or and you start to make room for the narcissist to take over your world that's right and that's what they're trying to do and so they will use anger they'll be they'll use sharp tongue they'll use belittling. They'll use these techniques. They'll even threaten you to where, again, you'll walk on eggshells and you'll even be afraid. You'll start to be afraid so that you, you tell yourself, I better not say anything. I better just keep quiet. You don't want the narcissist to react and that's instilling fear in you. That's what they do. And it's sick and twisted. And you begin to second guess yourself because of their extreme irrational behavior. The sixth 
mind game that the narcissist plays is the sabotage you game. That's right. And so we know that the narcissist is extremely jealous and they are so fearful and threatened of not being in control and not having the superior position that let's say you have a great job and you have a job where you're very responsible over maybe a, a big project or many people and they will do anything to sabotage your success. That's right. They'll even go as far as hacking into your email. They'll go as far as taking mail that comes to your house and uh, burning it or shredding it. And they will not give you phone messages. They'll go under the hood of your car and do some damage there so you are not mobile. And it's very sick and twisted. I know that, but I want you to be aware of the MO. And somebody wrote me and said, Hey, Nanette, so what does MO stand for? And I said, that's a great question. It's called, it's Latin for modus operandi. And it means the method or strategy that somebody uses repeatedly, it becomes a, a, a method of theirs. And, and that's what this is with narcissists. Have you ever wondered and asked yourself, why is it so universal? Well, like when you leave comments, you can see people from the, the UK, from Kenya, from Australia, various places in the United States, and everybody is toting the same or very similar story. It's because these narcissists are demonically driven and there is a universal MO to all of this. And you know what? The more you educate yourself on the MO, but even greater than that, the more that you get God's word enlightening the eyes of your understanding. So you know how to handle this situation. You know how to avoid these people with, with everything that's in you and understand that it's a spiritual warfare. This is fantastic because this is going to protect you moving forward, but simultaneously, it's going to start backing those narcissists back against the wall, then back into a corner where they belong, quite honestly, where that maybe they can take an assessment of themselves and finally come to their senses, if you will, and change for the better and come to God, come to Jesus Christ. And the seventh mind game that the narcissist plays is the isolate you game. That's right. Have you ever noticed uh, where maybe a friend of yours or you've heard of somebody where they just got married and then within six months they've moved from the very close-knit town or a little city where they grew up, their families for generations grew up, and all of a sudden, the spouse wants to move. Oh yeah, they wanna move not, not in the next town or next city or next state, but they wanna move across country. Why do you think that is? It is also called a strategy, the isolation strategy. So what the narcissist is doing is pulling you away from your familiarity and from people that believe in you, love you, and would never turn their back on you or moving you away from that great job where you've had great status and you're, you're recognized. They want you to start from scratch at zero into a brand new location where you have to make new friends, you have to start a new job, but it's not your normal, hey, let's go someplace new. I know we have to start over, but we can do it. No, once you are far away from your family, your friends, your job that you've been at for 10 years, let's say, that is the time that the control that the narcissist wants to keep getting over you and manipulate you, wear you down and break you down, begins to get really hot and heavy. And you have very little support anymore because you're a half country away. You're, you're, you're away from everybody that you know can be there to support you. The eighth mind game that the narcissist plays on you is the place heavy obligations on you game. That's right. It'll start off with, they'll do some, some favors for you. 
not terribly huge ones, but they'll make it sound huge, right? So they'll do something,、uh, fix your car, or go run,、uh, get something for for you that is like a couple hours away, or pick you up at work when your car broke down, something like that. That any normal person would would find, you know, that in their heart to do, and would not go brag about it. But not the narcissist. Oh no, if they do this much for you. You better believe they're going to lot it out to everybody, the whole world, and then you owe them this much. So beware of that. And when those heavy obligations come towards you, they will really work your emotions over. Like, hey, I did this for you, and you can't even do that for me. And how come? So now you don't care about me, you don't love me, and then you're you're like, oh my gosh, bending over backwards to take care of them. And you know, you realize, wow, this wasn't really a favor at all. This was this was something that now you owe them, and they will just keep that. Whole facade up like they're doing favors for you. And here's another thing. I don't know if you、uh, have experienced this, but in the obligation category, the narcissist will clearly define what your obligations are to him and her, while they don't owe you anything. And here's a very strong example that if you have experienced this, jot that down beneath in the comments. If the narcissist gets sick, oh my goodness! This is like a little newborn baby. We have to take care of them around the clock, and there's so much work. Run up and down the stairs if you have stairs, and oh, there's everything that you have to just encompass, and and your full attention has to be on them. However, when you need care, when you get sick, when you need help. The narcissist bows out and will even attack you. Like, how, how inconvenient for you to get sick right now? You know I have the games going on this weekend. Or they'll just poo-poo it. Like, well, you know, figure it out. And I, it, it's so cruel. And I want you to understand these mos that. No person should tolerate these. No, do not excuse the narcissist. Oh, he or she's just a big baby. You know, they can't take care of themselves. Oh, you know,、um, you know, maybe that's how they grew up. Don't excuse the narcissist. I'm sorry, but it's high time that we call them out on this stuff and say, you know what? I'm not going to tolerate that bad behavior anymore. You detach from that. You deserve re reciprocity. You deserve everything that you're giving to someone. You deserve that in return. Don't settle for anything less. And the ninth mind game that I've listed, and mind you, these are not. This is not a complete list. I'm sure you can think of others, and if you do think of other mind games, write them down below. That way. Other people that view your comments will get familiar with that that mo and recognize that that's something they shouldn't tolerate. That's the whole purpose of this. It, it's not to, you know, we're not here to glorify the narcissist at all. We're here to glorify God Almighty and His Word and now Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we're here to glorify. That's why. It's so important to get the M O and understand what you're seeing, so you're not making excuses. I understand, as an empath, the good person, the Christian, we want to believe the best about people. We want to say, you know what? Maybe they're having a bad day. Oh, it was their upbringing. We we cope with things. We excuse people. No, no. When you see a cycle of abuse that is continual. That go, makes the rounds from point A to point Z and back again repeatedly, like a horror go round. Right? It keeps going around and around, and it doesn't stop until you make it stop. Until you say no. So that ninth, the ninth mind game is that they have put you into a mold. That's right, and. God help you if you break that mold. Now, who put you in that mold? That was the narcissist who put you into a certain mold. I call it a prison. They put you in the prison. They became the warden, 
and they had the key to your prison cell. Now, with that imagery, you would never tolerate that, but subliminally, that's how they look at this. You're their prisoner, and you have to do everything that he or she says. No, and oh, that is not correct. So I want you to know that they put you in there, and, and if you rebuttal or you speak up for yourself, they will do all the attacks, the belittling, the criticizing. They will put you back in your place that they put you in. That is not your place according to God's word though. So I want you to take back your standing in Christ. You don't have anybody steal your freedom. You don't have anybody push you against the wall. You don't have somebody put you on strings like a puppet. No, you're better than that. You're God's child, that's right. And I want you to take a stand because after I describe a little bit more about this last mind game, we're gonna get into God's word. So I'm gonna read to you some of the things they, the narcissist will specifically do if you break the rules of the prison, okay? They will punish you. They will deny you. They will reject you, criticize you, yell at you, shame you, ignore you, and gaslight you. Hey, you're going crazy, yeah, you need to get back in your cell. So those are the nine mind games that I have listed. Now we're gonna get into God's word because I always want you to leave you with scripture that helps to heal you, helps to rebuild you, and helps to direct you back on your path of truth and righteousness. So how do you counter these nine mind games? The whole goal of the narcissist doing these things is to control and manipulate you and to cause you to doubt yourself, cause you to lose self-esteem, get you angry, frustrated, confused, throw you off balance. So the things I don't want you to do is I don't want you to get angry. I don't want you to start defending yourself. I don't want you to start getting into an argument and getting angry and frustrated. I want you to stay calm and peaceful because once you understand what you're dealing with, you understand there's no need to get into all of that. You, you understand you're dealing with someone who's demonically driven, who wants to destroy you. And so you're going to stay very, very calm and you're going to tell them, I see what you're doing and I'm not going to respond to that. It's inappropriate behavior on your part and that's all you need to do that you're not going to play their game. You're just going to go gray rock and then detach, go walk away from them or walk out of the house, go do something and contain and maintain your in inner peace. So the first verse that I wanna look at is in Ephesians chapter five, verse 11. So when I say, let them know you see what they're doing and what they're all about, but that's about it. And that's kind of a form of exposing and reproving them. That's right. You don't need to get into it hot and heavy. You see what's going on, and that's all you need to know. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, And do not have fellowship or partnership or team up with the unfruitful works of darkness. Everything that the narcissist does, those nine mind games, they're ridiculous. They're, they're fruitless. They're producing nothing but s stroking their ego and producing no fruit in their life. And quite honestly, they have so much inner turmoil, so much shame and, and self-vindictiveness that they're the most unhappy people you will ever meet. And you know what, any jolly that they may get from you, from, from destroying you and trying to hurt you and cause you pain and suffering, that they're still 
not happy or tickled or anything. They're just very confused people, very demonically driven, and they need a lot of deliverance. You have to also understand that. And we do have an enemy, and God's Word says the enemy is the devil. However, each of us makes a choice whether we're going to listen to God's still small voice or we're going to listen to the demonic voices. Everyone has a choice. And it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, And do not have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them or reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. All those nine mind games that they do, those are done in this, their secret dark places in their, in their mind and their black heart. It's dirty. They, they plan and plot and scheme in the depths of their secret hideout. And it's dark and it's dirty. The next verse I want to share with you is in John chapter 8, verse 36, and it says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now, I most of you are Christians that are watching this. However, if you're wondering how to get born again and become a Christian, become a child of God, simply confess Romans chapter 8, verses 9 and 10, and it says, for if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And that will lead you to the new birth. It's so fantastic. Now the next verse is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, and it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You were bought with a price, that's right, the blood of Jesus Christ. You were bought back to God by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you are free. You are not going to let a narcissist put you in bondage, put them in that prison with the key that they hold. No, all those mind games are to imprison you, to keep you confused, to keep you doubting yourself, to take you off your path of truth and righteousness. But I want to encourage you and get you back on, help you get back on your path of truth and righteousness and recognize the freedom that you have in Christ Jesus. Now, the next verse that I want to share with you, it's, a, it's in a John chapter 8, verse 32, and it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So here on this channel, I'm sharing a lot of scripture with you, and you can find all of these verses and so forth in the timestamp down below. So you can go over this over and over again. You can just click on the time in the timestamp. It'll bring you into this video exactly where I share that particular verse. And that is what's going to set you free mentally, emotionally, and help to heal that trauma bond, help to heal the depths of your soul that have been ripped out and shredded to pieces. And I want you to know that it's available because if God said it, then it is so. It is available. And we know that because we trust in the Lord. And the final verse I want to share with you is in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and freely and confidently into God's presence. Isn't that fantastic? We no longer have to deal with the darkness of the narcissist that entangles us in that whole mess. We just go boldly, confident, freely to the presence of God and say, God, I need your help to get out of this entanglement and he will give you strength. He will help direct your steps. All is not lost, no. Greater is he that's in you, which is Holy Spirit, than the devils that are in the world. You must know this. And so I want to encourage you with these scriptures. And 
I want you to also share your comments. Your comments help other people as well. And if you have any prayer requests, do leave those down below as well. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.